वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल एंड दिस वीडियो इज अबाउट द रीसेंट पास रेट्स ऑफ सी एफ एफकोर्स द जुलाई टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन रिजल्ट जस्ट केम अप फॉर लेवल वन एग्जाम एंड इट शॉक द एंटायर वर्ल्ड वंस अगेन बाय रिकॉर्डिंग द लोएस्ट एवर हिस्टोरिकल पास रेट फॉर लेवल वन एग्जाम नाउ इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोन टू डिस्कस थ्रेड बेर अबाउट द पॉसिबल रीजन दैट वाई वी आर सींग द लो पास द स्पेट ऑफ लो पास रेट्स सिंस मे ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी and the possible reasons behind that and intentionally i did not make the video last time because i thought that it might have been a blip uh, just a momentary outlier however uh, with the two succeed succeeding uh, successive uh, low pass rates it does beggar an explanation at if not a full fledged discussion on the whole subject so uh, let's directly go into the uh, pass rate figures which is published also by the cfi and we'll come back to this slide once again as you can see that 2021 we have had so far three windows uh, one full fledged window that was in may and february and july were only reserved for level 1 exam february of course recorded 44% pass rate which is not very surprising for pretty much similar to what we have had witnessed uh, you know historic going by the historic record while the historic record average is in somewhere around 42% we had 44% however things suddenly took uh, uh, took a sharp turn in the may uh, exam where in 25% followed by the july exam where in 22% of the level 1 exam actually passed uh, not very surprisingly in the context the level 2 and level 3 of the may 2021 exam also witnessed the lowest ever historical pass rates at 40% and 42% respectively now in its defense the uh, global head for credentialing a uh, peg jobs had to say that you know he continues to see the impact from the exam disruptions that is being brought by the global pandemic and he said basically what he says is that it has been a difficult time period wherein people facing multiple start stop multiple disruptions not to mention their personal losses uh, even losses at the job front uh, exhaustion mental exhaustion because of uh, having to Uh, and you prepare for something not knowing whether you will be able to finally take that exam or not and uh, they say that all of them put together may have actually played a, a, a serious role i mean basically blame it on covid because of which that uh, they're seeing such a drastic drop in the pass rate itself and they don't see he does not see and the last line is very very important that going forward we do do expect the pass rates to approach pre covid levels historic levels in time so long as pandemic conditions subside so he says that he is hopeful that once the pandemic recedes uh, maybe the historic pass rates may come back so we'll see that what it actually means by that uh, let's take uh, an uh, a popular website in our consideration as well which is called the 300 hours which regularly conducts uh, the minimum passing score for all the three levels of cfa as well as the frm exam as well and as you can see that there Uh, guess estimate is roughly around ninety ninety five percent, and they do. Uh, you know, th th that's that's the the most reliable of an estimate that you can actually come across, knowing that CFA does not quite actually publish the MPS. Now, as you can see, that after the December twenty twenty exam, which had an estimated MPS of around sixty five percent, it shot up to seventy two percent in February April. Uh, followed by seventy four percent and seventy three percent respectively in May and July. But mind you, even with seventy two percent MPS, we had forty four percent of the candidates finally passing the level one exam. So if all of these things were true, then the the nearer cousin of CFA, that is the FRM exam, would have witnessed the same kind of dislodgement, the same kind of dislo uh, 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 this, this same kind of disarray and. even their mps and pass rates would have been impacted however when we do take a look at the frm exams we see that literally uh, but for the uh, the the certainty regarding somebody is able to take the exam or not the pass rates neither the pass rates nor the mps have really been impacted much you know that's that's uh, something which uh, is of significance out here as you can see that the the midline Uh, th there is not much of a variation around the midline uh, which suggests something drastic has happened so by this logic uh, there there seem to be a great contrast between the cfi as well as the garp as far as the <clears throat> operational levels are concerned though the ground level realities were same for them 
Now, I just made a small presentation out of this whole thing, which I think uh, will, will, you know, uh, put forth my viewpoint uh, in a more lucid manner. So, I just compiled the last uh, 2020, December 2020, which was the last time the paper-based exam was ever offered. And we could see that a total of 55,700 approximate uh, candidates took the exam across all the three levels, of which 52% had successfully managed to pass the exam. With uh, the CFA level one uh, witnessing around 50% pass rates with an MPS of 72%. Now, this is something of a worrisome. Why I'm saying so, we'll look over this in the next slide. So, if you look at the <clears throat> May 2021 pass rates, the MPS is estimated somewhere around 74%. So, this was 72% in December. This is 74% in May 2021 exam. So there is only two percentage point difference, 72% and 74%. However, when you consider the pass rates, 49% who, who have had passed in the December 2020 exam vis-a-vis -vis only 25% who have cleared the exam in May 2021. Well, that two percentage point pass rate does not quite justify, does not quite explain that how come the pass rate may plummet by half. Now, there is one more comparison that I wanted to bring to your notice. All the three windows put together in 2021, we had approximately around 83,500 people taking the exam in level one I'm talking about, of which uh, an overall aggregate pass rates have been around 30.5%. So that includes your 44% pass rate, 25% uh, pass rate and 22% pass rate respectively. In 2019, just before the pandemic, June 2019, approximately the similar number of candidates took the exam of which 41% passed. So even going by this standard, so three windows in 2021, which can be compared to the 2019 pre-pandemic June exam with almost a similar amount, similar number of candidates taking the exam. Still, this does not quite justify that how there is a percentage point drop of almost 11%. So against the 41% weighted number, against the 41% of uh, candidates actually passing the exam in 2019, June, uh, only 30.5% have passed in all the three windows put together so far. We have another three windows still coming up uh, for the 2021. Now, there are several theories that are being propagated, uh, like CFI is a money grabber. Well, I beg to differ because CFI still stands for a non-profit organization. Nobody, there is no shareholder to CFI. Uh, the last I checked, they had around $500 million uh, cash on their balance sheet and nobody gets any incentive by just, you know, making people sit for the exam. Okay. The CFI wants to retain the exclusivity of the club. And yes, I do tend to believe that this is partially true, especially because now the level one exam is being offered four times a year vis-a-vis uh, -vis our times when we had only twice a year level one or once a year level two vis-a-vis uh, -vis now once a year, twice a year level two and twice a year level three. So uh, there were, uh, uh, I mean, in my previous video, in one of my previous videos, I've already covered that how, you know, a bunch of charter holders, uh, they were kind of aggrieved, they were kind of peeved, who already holds a, a very good association with the CFI Institute. And they might have had, you know, expressed their concern, maybe potentially may, would have withdrawn, uh, could have withdrawn their membership with the CFI. And they would have might have said that, you know, look, what took us on an average of four or five years uh, through this, uh, you know, through this, uh, the, the flux of opportunities that you're providing to the candidates, uh, you know, in no time, you're going to flood the market with, with the CFI charter owner. It's completely unfair to us because it took us four to five years, whereas with this opportunity, one could actually earn the charter in, in less than a couple of years, perhaps. So that may have had some impact with the CFI. I'm not saying that that would have impacted that, but they could have impacted. So, so that's the thing. So it's like, you know, uh, of the 170,000 odd CFA charter holders, they are uh, registered with the CFA Institute who pay their annual membership dues, uh, fees. Maybe a sizable number of them may have actually, you know, expressed their concern. And that, would, that might have been a revenue loss to the CFA Institute. Could be, possibility. Uh, the third problem, the third reasoning is that the test varied. And yes, I do agree with this. Not everybody got the same test. So uh, when we do have variety of tests being presented, we really cannot create a benchmark, let alone judge the candidate's performance. Traumatic botch up as well. Uh, to a percentage wise, maybe a very insignificant thing to have happened. But however, nonetheless, this is one potential serious thing that 
perhaps a CFI and the Prometric would iron out between themselves. I have had heard horror stories of you know computer shutting up between the exam while one is taking the exam itself or the system just wouldn't work. Uh, the system suddenly showed uh, halfway the, during the exam that you know your your time is up and you know uh, okay you know you need to press the finish button and things like that. So these may be anomalies, but yes, some of some some, uh, 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 some portion of some uh, few number of candidates may have suffered because of that. Uh, CFA Institute of Defense in their defense they say that you know uh, there is no variety in the test itself. Okay, all right, so that's to begin with. So that is to say that. The level of difficulty of the exam uh, that has not changed uh, come CVT or come the papers it is all one and the same thing. Pandemic did play a havoc and I already discussed that burnout was significant and uh, things would return to past levels once the pandemic and the impact of the pandemic precedes. Well, we have to look into it when actually that happens and if that really is one deciding factor going forward or not. And they have also come out this time around with the one uh, you know very new explanation. I would not say it's an explanation. They have actually published this in their MPS guideline as well. That unlike the popular notion or the popular belief of the, how the MPS is being uh, 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 how the MPS is being actually set, and for the ones who do not know, the MPS is being set through a process called as a modified Ang of method. A modified Ang of method would necessitate uh, finding out the top five percent uh, raw scores. And you know, taking the seventy percent of those uh, top five percent, uh, top ten percent raw scores, and then whatever be the uh, benchmark be, so that becomes the MPS. Well, that is not the case anymore. Uh, even though the test is MCQ, then there is a bunch of uh, CFA charter holders who are uh, who have who form a committee, and they actually form a panel as well, and they discuss among themselves threadbare each and every question regarding the, diff, the level of difficulty and how it would have been had they well, if they were to take the same exam how difficult it would have been for them so this is a combination of the psychographic test uh, that's what they say is the psychographic test uh, and that actually takes precedence as far as a certain event is concerned well again that's the defense of cf institute we have got nothing to say to it but one thing is for sure that uh, these kind of assessment obviously will then bring a lot of subjectivity. Uh, what I believe is actually happening. So, prometric thing will iron out uh, sooner uh, than later. I am sure about that. And one significant aspect, which is of course uh, true, is that uh, China and India, in particular, which happens to be one of the major hub of the CFA program candidates. Uh, they there were a lot less number of participation because of the pandemic. Yes, we do understand that. I do completely understand that. So obviously, it's not a whole hog measurement. It's not a whole. We, the assessment is definitely incomplete because we could not get the uh, the complete pool of candidates. Which going forward may be uh, uh, you know may give us a better insight once uh, you know candidates from these two countries start participating in the program once the health related restrictions uh, you know are lifted and more and more centers open up. Uh, not everybody gets the same test. Well, we can't do anything about it. That's the decision of the CFI and we have to live with that. But what it does convey is that reliability on the 300 hours for estimating the MPS, well, one needs to really look into. What a lot of subjectivity I've already discussed. Uh, one funny thing that came out was that, you know, the MPS is though seen at a very high level uh, and yet uh, CFI says that the candidates were poorly prepared. Well, both can't exist simultaneously. It's just not possible. So either you have a high uh, pool of uh, candidates pushing the MPS northbound or exactly the reverse of it. Both can be happening. But nonetheless, I can assure you of one thing, uh, going by the past couple of uh, records that have happened in the May 2021 exam and the July 2021 exam, it's definitely a tectonic shift. It's a seismic shift that's happening. Okay, It's a paradigm shift that's happening. And I have got, you know, you know few suggestions as a charter holder uh, that, you know, the glory days of 40% pass rates for L1 or a uh, Fifty percent for L three; those days are probably over. So, if you're not scoring, you know, anywhere between seventy five percent plus in your mocks in for level one, or less than sixty seven percent in your level two, or less than sixty percent in level three, forget about passing the exam. It's not going to happen. And I'll tell you why. Uh, you see, I'm going to end up this uh, presentation by a couple of showing a couple of slides uh, rather than my face. Uh, one is that just take a quick look at this this pass this this uh, result. This is a candidate's performance for the uh, 
um, July 2021 exam wherein you know, he has scored, the candidate has scored more than 90%. Now, watch the vertical distance between the MPS and the 90 percentile. It's insignificant. Granted, because only 22% pass, so the minimum passing score is obviously set at the 78 percentile. So which means this is 78 percentile and this is 90 percentile. So in between this is 12 percentile only. We can understand that. Uh, however, what does not quite make sense is, is somebody who just failed the exam because he missed it by a thread. Watch the difference. It's almost insignificant. How unlucky one could be. So that's the whole thing. Uh, and, you know, I could not be emphasizing more on, you know, start early. And, of course, one more important aspect. Whom are you choosing as your provider partner? That is also going to be of paramount importance. Because please understand, unlike in our times, you're not going to uh, be having the luxury of solving 180-odd question. Uh, those questions are considerably reduced. That means the margin of error, the number of questions that actually you can commit error and yet still hope to pass the exam, that was also going to proportionally come down. That's also going to reduce proportionately. So you do have that that you know uh, the 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 margin of error, the room for error, you know, is is that there's that much thinner. Okay, unlike in our times. So you have to be thorough. You have to know more. It's like asking only five questions from an entire syllabus of three thousand pages. Vis a vis asking twenty questions out of an entire syllabus of three thousand pages. So, uh, whom you are partnering with your provider, prep provider, that's also important. Anyway, I hope it did make some sense and good luck to all the CFA program candidates going forward. Thank you.